And it's people such as you that will bring this revolution in this country for justice. A social revolution is what it is. And it's long overdue. And Cesar Chavez is going to win. He's going to win because he's got people such as you following him. Thank you. It goes back to those folks who had the, the heart, the ganas, you know, to create it. They paved the road. I mean, they did the hard lifting. They're the ones that demonstrated. They're the ones that showed that we were not served in the communities as we should. Luz talked so quietly, so quietly, that he got the, the workers just to stop working. Yep. They, uh, the founders, uh, had the vision of a better community and a community that was treated as equals. On a Saturday afternoon, several Mecha students help clean up a lot in South Phoenix. As they tidy up the yard in Holloway debris, they are uncovering something very special. The roots of a movement which fought for their education. This is Santa Rita. It was simple and beautiful. It was right in the heart of the Chicano community. They are learning this humble facade is home to a powerful past. It holds big dreams built on sweat and sacrifice. You remember, Terry, we turned off all the coolers so that the business people would be sweating it out so they know what it was to be in the barrios. But to truly understand why all these people packed its long, narrow walls, we need to take you back to 1969. We had the Vietnam War. At the time, we had Cesar Chavez uh, organizing farm workers. They don't want to recognize our union, United Farm Workers Organizing Committee. It was a time when the community saw the progress of the civil rights movement, uh, primarily in the uh, black community. We shall overcome the song heard at many protests. We were caught up in the idea that we were not getting you know, our slice of the American pie. The discrimination has always been here. We couldn't swim in the uh, swimming pools. But what they would do is they would not let us swim in the swimming pools until the day that they were going to empty the swimming pools. And in some of the pools, like Broadway and, and the Riverside, they wouldn't let us in the, into the swimming pools. Oh my gosh, I hadn't been here in years. It brings back so many memories. This was our first building that was loaned to us by the Catholic Church to start Chicano por la Causa after we were able to receive a small grant through the National Council of La Raza. And all of it was barrio, all the way clear to 16th Street and up to the railroad and up to 7th Street. All of this was, was barrio. They used to call it Little Hollywood. This was the birthplace of Chicano por la Causa and, and the center point of, of the farm workers movement in Arizona. The whole purpose of it was that, that this would be a, a, an urban organization that would help uh, rural workers. At that point it was fighting for, la, it was called La Causa. The cause uh, for justice. Fair wages, respect, good education. Cesar Chavez came to town and after that we were never the same. Uh, <laughs> isn't that true? <laughs> we were never the same after that. It was, he taught us to, you know, to, how to get involved politically, how to organize. Well, at that time we were, uh, we were organizing the agricultural workers, and what happened was that the legislation passed a very repressive bill. And House Bill 207 has created a great amount of controversy. Then Cesar came for a rally that we had in front of the state capitol, but I didn't expect him to even talk about having a fast. That room, the first room on to your left, that was the room where he fasted. It just the bed barely fit it in there. The thing that actually put CPLC on the map, and it was prior to me coming into the organization, was a boycott of Phoenix Union High School. Specifically, there were a number of walkouts at the Phoenix Union High School that we coordinated through this office. We, we knew that education had to be one of our primary concerns. Uh, uh, you need an, an educated uh, community in order for 
future successes in, in, in all areas. Taking all the Hispanic students out because they had no Hispanic administrators, uh, they had no security Hispanics, and our kids were being mistreated. So they, the organization at that time created its own high school in the basement of one of the churches right next to Phoenix Union. Most of the kids were steered to, uh, to jobs that, that had, in many, in many aspects, no future. We wanted uh, them to provide a more comprehensive course of study, one that would allow students who wanted to complete their, uh, uh, their education in higher institutions of higher learning the ability to do so instead of having the whole school direct their activities towards some, some sort of vocation. It doesn't mean that we don't raise hell. We just raise hell in a different way. You know, we raise hell, you know, through calling the governor or calling the mayor, you know, versus, you know, picketing the mayor or the governor. The social and activist side of Chicano por la Casa had to be a free standalone. Tommy Espinosa, with the board at the time, brought in a corporate model for CPLC, where we were a social service, private nonprofit. We're still a nonprofit, but we run it with a business model. And there isn't a retained, retained earnings or a profit because those dollars are put back into the community. And if you try to mix the business into the social, it, what would occur is that you wouldn't do either one well. But there is no organization like CPLC that's so diversified that has lending, credit union, social work, you know, gives food boxes. And we go from, from, uh, from you know, from babies to seniors. We built stain sustainability with, before we even knew what the word meant. <laughs> it's built on the spiritu and the concept uh, and the reflection of of, of our community. It's creating a whole host of opportunities uh, in many, many, many different fields. It is a very successful organization. It's a multi-million dollar organization. It has helped a lot of people. Uh, a place you can go, uh, not for a handout, but for a hand up. It just makes me feel so blessed that people have been so good to me. So I try to do the very best I can for people. It hurts a lot when you really can't help someone, but um, I try my very best to do what I can for each and every one. I think it goes through my mind is La Causa in 69 is the same Causa in 2009 and we need to continue on embracing it and pushing and trying to improve our plight. We're still fighting for immigrant causes. We're still fighting for equity. We're still fighting for a, a seat at the table. I think the, the things that Chicanos por la Causa doesn't see uh, as achievements are the most tangible. Uh, that family that was hungry, that got fed. The family that needed a house, who got housed. And the family who needed a job, who got a job. And never knowing about it, but knowing full well that the time you spend in this boardroom or the time you spend in your office clearly is helping people.